growing up here on the coast and coming from a family of carpenters, when I found that my real goal in life was to create things, I had the skills and the tools passed on from generation to generation. We moved to Half Moon Bay in 1966. My dad built his first family house on the beach in Miramar. And from there, I could sit at breakfast every day and look at the ocean and on the right side of the kitchen window, see where Mavericks was breaking. And I look at the years and as I go back and look at the surfer magazines. They talk about that monster swell in 69 that hit the North Shore. It's like, wait a minute, I live that here on this shore. And I remember a few storms where looking out from the kitchen window, the horizon would have these black walls of water all the way across. And, you know, I didn't really know what I was looking at when I'm nine years old, eight years old. And um, it all started to make sense. Once I started surfing out in front of the house, all the surfers would show up. And then into the 70s in high school, I, my skills started to get better and better. I started shaping my own boards. And then by the time I was a senior in high school, there was no wave that I didn't think I could tackle. Welcome to Maverick Surf Shop. Um, what I've got here is a, a longboard nose rider model. And uh, I, gotta, I just gotta put a fin in it and, uh, and it'll be ready to go. Uh, without the fin, you won't be able to go in one direction. So we try to always put a fin in the board before they leave the shop. When and they are looking for a board, the first thing I do is I ask them, what are, they, what are you riding? and I have them show me the board they're riding and tell me their experience of how it rides for them. And from that, I can tell by looking at the board because I've been shaping surfboards for somewhere close, actually more than 40 years, actually closer to 50 years. Anyway, <laughs> but who's counting? Um, when they tell me their experience of the board that they're riding, I can determine how they're going to get to their vision of where they want to go. Knowing these boards inside and out, shaping them, designing them, and riding them, which is the key. I mean, you can talk and read books and you can do this and that, but unless you're in the ocean, as much as I've been, mm. there's a lot of mystery out there. I've reduced that mystery down to a, an exact science, so to speak. Mm. And uh, so this board's a nose rider and we're putting a big fin in it because with, a, with standing up on the nose, you've heard the, the phrase, hang 10. Um, you need a big fin like this to hold the tail of the board down while you're standing on the very tip of it, nine feet, six inches away. That's uh, part of the game of surfing is you figure out what kind of waves you want to ride and I can give you the right tool for, the, for those waves. Being fortunate enough to have my parents move to the coast and then going through uh, middle, grammar school, middle school, high school, and by the way, there were no surf clubs and no surf teams then. We're talking the 60s, mid 60s. So nothing nothing out here. People didn't go in the water on purpose unless they were ab divers or they're fishermen in boats. Yeah. Nobody, there was a handful of surfers that surfed here and I was completely enamored with the surfers and I wanted to be one. And one, one day a guy, one of the guys get, took pity on me and gave me this old beat up surfboard. Yeah. Now I had my own surfboard. So I put as much time in the water as I possibly could. That was my playground after school. I get home, 100 yards down the, down the street, and I'm on sand. So 
Fast forward, grammar school, middle school, high school, my skills are getting good enough to where I can challenge the biggest waves that we had around here.